We're on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Babam the podcast for those who are raised by the Disney Channel, like us. Do you ever do that thing where you just like like start talking in front of the fan so it like makes the sounds? It's like it. Well, it's it doesn't sound like the throat thing where it's like. What? Yeah, like the oscillating fan, like that you might have okay. in your bedroom, and then you just like right. start you make noises into it. You're just like wow, wow, and then like the sound of the fan hits off of the fan blades and like. I want to like, say I've never done that, but that sounds fun. Uh, I'm alone here. In this. I mean, I think honestly, like, even though that sounds weird, I would guess that I'm the weird one who's never done that. I think okay. other people will be like, oh, yeah, I did that as a kid. I feel, I, I, I think so. I hope so. I feel yeah. like I've seen. Has that ever happened to you? Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> Has that ever happened to you? <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, okay, yeah, I'm Bethany. But yes. <clears throat> and I'm Crystal. Thank mm. you for that. And Always today we're nice. talking about the movie that'll put you to sleep. Xenon. <laughs> the sequel. The sequel. <laughs> that no one needed. I didn't realize this movie was going to be so bad. I guess you know I didn't what, remember Crystal? it at all. I just didn't remember it was what happened. not good. It was not good. <laughs> no. And it made no <laughs> sense. Say about that. I, it just, yeah. it was hard to follow, to be honest. So, oh yeah, get, keep going with your initial thoughts. Tell me, tell me how you you felt. Do you remember it at all? Oh, yes, you said you didn't remember it from childhood or anything. Yeah, I thought I did because I remember watching the the series and I remember the beach scene. I guess that's in Z three. I thought it was in oh. this one, um, but uh, yeah, none of it came back to me, and nothing made sense that I was seeing. I don't know. I just feel like <laughs> these girls. Why were they hiking up a mountain? Why, why did we even go to see Protozoa? What was he going to do? Like Why? I mean, I, I love Protozoa, but why was he right. in this movie? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> what? Like, I love Protozoa, but why was he here? Who, who invited him? I... I, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it out still. I don't know. Couldn't it's tell weird that the movie went out of their way to include him, but then did ultimately narratively make his presence completely pointless. Like, completely why did they do useless. that? <laughs> and it's like, oh, the aliens really want to meet him. Just kidding. No. no. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> he's here, so might as well get on that stage, he's here, right? guys. <laughs> like, okay. I do like the song my oh, yeah. things. i mean of course it's no yeah. supernova girl but right. it's pretty good yeah what was it it was like um the galaxy is ours my girl yeah girl. the galaxy is the galaxy ours is yeah ours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah take yeah. me to the stars so much mm-hmm. to know so far to go the galaxy, galaxy is ours. ours the galaxy, galaxy is, is ours, my girl, girl. Galaxy, the is, galaxy ours. is ours. Yeah. yeah. The galaxy is ours. Yeah. That's it. Oh, oh, love that. Nice. Thank you. Um, that was a, another bop. Yeah. Yeah. What the galaxy bop. I will say, like, what did you think? I only, okay, so this is actually funny because mostly I don't remember this movie at all, but in one way it completely formed a certain part of who I am as a person. Oh. Um, <clears throat> which is clothes? that I. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I love. I want people to think that I dress like Xenon. People who don't know me, um, or Margie. I no. love Margie's fits. Margie is wardrobe, especially when she first enters. I was like, "Girl, that <gasps> yeah. fit. Mm-hmm. That like, fit, though. Give me that. Yeah, give me that right there. Margie's outfits it. were to die for. Like, give me her whole wardrobe. I will wear it so as a thirty-four cute. year old woman. I I want it. I need Abs- it. Yeah, um, I'll wear it tomorrow, right now. No, but the whole stance on aliens, like Aunt Judy, instantly um, believes that Z did hear aliens yeah. and she's like yeah are we like a planet of egomaniacs of course and i right. think like that is how i've always thought about believing in aliens i'm like obviously like yeah. it's so egotistical to think that we're the only ones out here and so it kind Same. of formed my whole idea of um extra uh, you know uh, extraterrestrials so that's great that part, i like that because that's so true yeah but the rest of it 
Yeah. The rest of it, highly forgettable. Didn't remember a damn thing. Yeah. Um, didn't want it. Didn't need it. I don't need a Disney Channel original movie that centers on the military. Not for me. No. Um, Their little camo space shuttle. Like, bitch, get the fuck what, out of though? here. When this movie, I know this movie came out in 2001, but when in 2001? Oh, I don't know. I just got to figure this out real quick. This just feels like the reason a I'm summer curious, movie to me. Could maybe be. Maybe so. Oh, January. Okay, then that's not it. Oh, I was kidding. gonna say, and this does not fall under that. Um, what I was gonna say, but I feel like following nine eleven, there were a period mm. of decoms that became like super pro, like military in America. Oh, and I was wondering if this. I mean, I guess it's not really pro military, so that wouldn't make sense. But like the fact that the military mm. is even involved is just like why. Yeah. Yeah. Like I didn't understand why the U.S. military had to show up at all, but. I guess, you know, and it wasn't really a major plot point. Like, the the aliens could have done their thing and helped them save their space station without the military having to come and destroy things. I guess well, that had to be a catalyst, but it was just like... There had to be, like, some, um, you know, some uh, what's something. the word? Opposition. Yeah, villain. That's true, yeah. But yeah, like, the opposition could have just been, like... The space station is falling apart. Like, the military didn't have to come do it. You know what I mean? Yes, and the the space station was kind of falling apart in the last one. Yeah, but it was because of Wyndham's bug. Yeah. Though, right? That's Actually, true, that's no. True. Before they came, he was talking about some of the things, like the technical issues they had yeah. faced. So, I don't know. I, guess. I think it got worse. I think it's just it was 27 years old, the space station. So, like yeah it just started aging but i think okay but i do agree that like it certainly didn't have to be the military like it could have been like another evil corporation like just taking it for parts something. or whatever it, yeah which would make more sense like why is it the military what, what do they want this for parts uh, i don't understand had to make margie's uh past a military brat i guess and then that's her reason for being a cunt so that's <laughs> it <laughs> i moved around a lot <laughs> <laughs> why don't you like me um <laughs> bitch you hate me uh, yeah oh, you take that personally that's just who i am the gaslighting like girl shut I, up uh, she, is, <laughs> I, she took a master class in gaslighting like how yes. are you gonna bully someone to the and, extent she does and then be like what's your problem with me oh you take what i say personally oh my god do people <laughs> actually listen to me oh woe is me <laughs> oh 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 Bitch. Yeah, I'm glad Xenon put her in her place. Like, we all have problems, girl. Chill out. Yeah. And also, shut up. Yeah. And also, yeah. <laughs> she's Margie. Oh, my God. The fits made her worth it, but she sucks so hard. She really um, does. Really and truly. All right. Let's get into it. Let's the galaxy do it. is ours, my girl. Oh, all right. you're doing... You took the notes on this, right? Yeah. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Did you also take notes on this? No, but I oh, okay. was panicking that I should have. But <laughs> then I'm like, wait a second. I feel like I talked a lot about Xenon. So I you think did, I did. Because the... you okay. took the notes. Yeah. <laughs> I, though, at some point will have to tell you that it's your turn when it is, in fact, mine. Well, um, it will be tomorrow. We three. Yeah, oh, that's true. I did want to mention oh, something about the book. Xenon. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So I looked up the book, and the synopsis is that Xenon lives on the space station, but she's sent to Earth to visit her grandparents for the summer. Oh. And at first, she thinks that Earth is completely boring, but then her grandparents' dog has puppies, and her opinion about Earth makes a change for the better. <laughs> and that's it. But the cover Whoa. is so cute. It's just this little space age looking girl. I've seen it. Yeah. You have, yeah. She's yeah, got yeah, but it's it. the thing. Okay, so yeah, she's yeah. this little space age uh, looking girl, and she's like flying through space on her little like hoverboard thing, and she's got a bunch of adorable puppies on her little hoverboard with her, and it's so cute. Aww. It's like this like deep blue background and like the purple and yellow, very space age looking kind of animation, and it's cute. I love it. How, how I old is she it. supposed to be? Oh, oh, I don't know. The little synopsis didn't say, so I have no clue. I'm just curious. It seems like she might be younger than. Yeah, she looks small on that cover. Yeah. Yeah. The illustration, yeah. like she looks like a, she looks and the story. maybe like eleven or or twelve. Yeah. 
Max. Yeah. yeah. But she's so cute, and I love her little space age hair. She's adorable. Oh, I love, yeah, her little hair is very cute. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'll get All it. Right. The hardcover is on Amazon for like Aww. 14 bucks. Oh. I feel like that'd be yeah, so nice. cute. Yeah, it seems worth it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Lean on the sequel. <gasps> Here we go. Let's go to sleep. She's. <laughs> um, we open on <laughs> a zap pad that has like Star Wars type like letters scrolling up the screen. <clears throat> and it tells us that uh, tells us the events of the first movie. We just did that last week. We'll listen to that. If you don't know it, I'm not doing it here. Yeah. And it tells us that because of all the amazing stuff she did in that one, Xena can go, quote, go absolutely anywhere, anywhere. do absolutely, absolutely anything. anything. Murder, totally an option. <laughs> totally fine. Mm-hmm. It's in her wheelhouse Beavery, now. she can steal whatever she wants. Yeah. It's She's hers. She's got a free pass. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That is loco, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but it I also tells us that, that she's now 15 and shit's about to change. Yeah. And her life is stellarious. So, stellarious. stellarious. What a great term. Yeah. Love it. And we see her with her best friend who is uh, not the Nebula we know and love played by Raven Simone, but a new mm. Nebula played by... Shadia Simmons, now Shadia Abdub, um, who's from the color, the color of friendship. Yes. Uh, so. Oh my God. <clears throat> I can't wait to get to that one. That's going to be a while. I think, right. Is that one from the nineties? It's not going to be too long. I think it's from like either the late nineties or early two thousands. Oh, okay. It might okay. be the late nineties. I think it's soonish. Um, okay. yes. and they used to not be as often as they, I think God eventually, like, I think mm. they were like maybe two a year for a time. Got you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. So for that one. love the color of friendship so much. They're on their. I actually. I'm. I don't know why, but I'm nervous to watch that one. I hope it holds up. I remember loving so, it. Yeah. But I'm like just ooh. handling. I think race stuff mm-hmm. that long ago makes me nervous. But maybe it's perfect. I don't know. Same seas. Like these are some big topics for a '90s decom. So, hmm. I loved it though. That they are. When I was a young black girl. So who knows? We'll see. Yeah. Now you're an old white lady, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so true. My transformation is all but complete. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, um, but mm. Xenon and Nebula are on their way to break some rules, you know, because Z literally can't get in trouble, apparently. <laughs> Spoiler alert, she does get in trouble almost immediately. Um <laughs> They go into this room of monitors with, like, a trackpad and stuff, and Xenon shows uh, Nebula a game, a quote-unquote game she's invented, where she's basically playing brick ball, where there's, like, two yeah. paddles kind of, like, knocking ball, balls around. Yeah, it's um, clearly Trying pong. to keep them in. Like, she's, they're playing yeah, pong, pong and the thing I don't get is, like, okay, go ahead, you continue. No, 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 tell, oh. tell, tell, tell me what you don't get. Well. Do you want me to explain what happens? Yeah, exactly. Because oh, okay. that's what I don't okay. understand. Yeah. Okay, so this device inexplicably, for some reason, actually controls Commander Plank's office. Mm-hmm. And the balls in there are actually his office items. And the um, the paddles are doors that they're opening and closing to, you know, space. Right. Like. <laughs> Just like. The vacuum the up. of space. And yeah. so the shit's getting sucked out. But. What I don't get is that they are very clearly playing Pong. The ball is going back and forth on the screen. Right. What is the ball? How, what is that? There's nothing in between those airlocks that's knocking back and forth that's on, picking up on this monitor. Otherwise, we'd also think... see a giant square for the desk. We'd see... Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't... Every, but everything's a ball. Because, like, more, more balls show up, but it's weird because it's like, there should already be all the balls because everything's inside. Right, everything's So, like, there. why do more balls... I think we're just, like, overthinking it. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, like, okay. there, there's it no doesn't. answers. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. No, you were okay. correct. It's mm. bogus. Yeah, nature. I literally wrote down, shit don't make no sense, so... Mm. Pretty common theme in these movies. Yeah. Um, my <laughs> question, though, even more so, is why is this accessible? Why, why does this exist? Who, right. who made this seemingly game right. that actually destroys property? Like, I, I don't understand. what. And I just why? don't get it. What if, he was in, what if Commander Plank was just chilling at his desk making some little notes, and then he gets sucked out into space? He could have He could have been killed. He could have died. Can't get him back. <laughs> He's just floating. He's just out there now. 
Well, he's Freezing. instantly dead, so we dead, don't need yeah. to get him back. I'm about to say, dead within seconds. Like, what are we, what? Yeah. Um, yeah, how. honestly, they could have found a better way for her to break the rules and get in trouble. So, like, this yeah. is really kind of, like, unnecessarily nonsensical. And I feel like they're like, oh, the kids won't be able to put this together. It'll just be entertaining. Ha, ha, ha. But I feel no, like. No, but it's like. No. Why make that seem like a kids game? Why make that appealing to chill? Like why design it to specifically appeal to? Ch- it's also weird because it's like a weirdly juvenile game for a fifteen year old. Like I, yeah. I don't understand like why fifteen year old Dean and Nebby are like, oh, you're really good at like that. It's not making sense. And they're like high fiving and shit. And they're like, I'm like bro, y'all are playing pong. This is I think this is the first video game that was ever invented. Like, it is. It is absolutely the first video game ever existed. That is yeah. a fact. Okay, and exactly. this is twenty fifty one. And at the time, what are we doing? We already had Nintendos and Playstations and shit. So it's like, this is not, this is not any kind of futuristic game to be excited about. So yeah, it's I, nothing about it makes sense. You're right. I actually hate it. We talk about it too much, and I hate it. I hate this decision. Let us move on. She plays Pong uh, and destroys Kevin Plank's office. <laughs> Yes, we then see her. She's in her room oh. with Nebula, and she's reacting to having just been dumped by Gregory. Oof, that um, have a nice life. And it hurts. Yeah, she takes it pretty hard. Which I mean, I would too. The way he was like after her, but also like right. y'all live, you live in space, and he lives on Earth. Yeah, you girl, can't, you can't That's make it not work. The kind you of long distance we can really work with. So it's yeah. insurmountable, and you like have an issue with Earth, and obviously he's not moving to space. So yeah not gonna work um Mm -hmm. so we then see that z has gotten in trouble even though she's you know invulnerable up to this point she gets in trouble and has been assigned to work observing alien contact with orion who this guy also his name is thomas wright Mm. can you name the other decom that he was in Mm. he did look familiar is he in one that we've already seen We've already watched? No, not yet, but it's... I remember he's in it because it's one of my favorites from childhood. Mm, I was going to guess Phantom of the Megaplex, but I think that's wrong. No. No. I can't think of it. I can't place his face. Okay, I can tell you. I can tell you. Tell me. He's in Stepsister from Planet Weird. Oh, Stepsister from Planet Weird. The bubble Uh, aliens. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, I thought he was hot when I was a kid. He's a cutie. And I think so. Yeah, he is a cutie. I stand by it. But also the thing is, he is hot because, not as a kid, but like as yeah, an adult because yeah. he's still an actor. He's, oh. I think, Australian or maybe from New Zealand, one of those. And he okay. is still an actor. Most, Not most recently. Recently, he was on this show that came out about 10 years ago that is one of the best like um, procedural crime dramas that I've seen oh. called Top of the, Top of the Lake. Oh, okay. I like the sound of that. Yeah. Yeah. He's in it with um, Elizabeth Moss, and he's great in it. So. Oh, love Elizabeth Moss. Oh, my God. Yeah, she's a Scientologist. Oh. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. Damn. Which is surprising, because she doesn't seem like she would be, but she is. Yeah. She was born I... into it, so I have more sympathy for people who are born in it. Oh, same. Okay. Do you know? Oh, I'm just going to keep going with this. What yeah. Disney premiere film was Elizabeth Moss in? What? She was in a Disney premiere? Yeah, I didn't even know that. a little baby. <laughs> playing what? Twi- she was the twin in, in this movie of Eric Von Detten of Brink fame. Oh, yes. Yes. We all know our boy Eric. Mm-hmm. No, but I have no idea. She was a twin? Yeah. Boy Escape from Witch Mountain. Oh, I never saw that one. You spoke about mm-hmm. this before. It was my favorite yeah. since a kid. Yeah. yeah, I love that. I want to watch Val, that. The guy who plays Val, he's also um, in Sam Horrigan, right? is also the antagonist, the like antagon- the bully at least, mm-hmm. in that. Yeah. Yep. I remember you were saying in the Brink episode they were just like, yeah. they brought they brought them back together. They're like, this is a wonderful duo. The dynamic duo. Mm. Truly. After all these <laughs> years. <laughs> oh God. Never what is old. it? <laughs> Your butts are mine. <laughs> We all know what he means when he said that. I'm like, I, I didn't know. <laughs> I did. I absolutely knew what he was talking about. 
he wants that ass. I love the seductive way you say it. I absolutely <laughs> knew what he was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I feel so, bad for Orion. From though. there, our poor boy. He's yeah, yeah. He needs to be freed from freed from like these this solitary confinement and this alien. Yeah, he's a slave room. to his own obsession because he like really wants to find the aliens. Yeah, but he also needs to get a life. He really um, does. Yeah, Which he's a little cutie. He, does. he doesn't need to be locked up in there. I know. So then, on top of everything else, on TV, Xenon learns that Protozoa has not been seen since his space concert mm-hmm. two years ago. So, like, why is this news? news? I, yeah. I wondered the same thing. Because she hasn't was been like, seen in two years. <gasps> this can't be happening, Mom. Right? It can't be happening. And I'm like, it seems like it's been happening for a while. It's been happening for two years. I think people get concerned minimally after six months. Right. I would say, yeah. Especially someone who's so visible like Protozoa. After a few months of not seeing him, that should have already made the news. And that one they could have easily fixed where it was like, just an update. He still hasn't been seen. The ongoing search of Pro- like make right. it all, like we've been talking about it, and she's like, "Oh, they still haven't found still, him. It's been right. two years." But she's like, "Wow, at two years, this news breaks. What? What are we talking about? <laughs> nonsense! Absolute oh, nonsense! This movie. This, movie this is. is what happens. I already don't like these movies, and then we talk about them, and I realize mm-hmm. how stupid they are. They really are so dumb." And I feel like they just think that kids' brains aren't developed enough to notice these nonsensical details. To be fair, I did not notice these details as a kid. I mean, I don't rem- <laughs> remember. I guess I... Yeah, I guess I To be notice. fair, they are correct. <laughs> oh, God. I don't remember having any issues with this movie as a child. So, yeah. None on. whatsoever. So spot they get on. it. <laughs> Damn. Oh, my God. Yeah. But yeah, they're dumb. But they could do better. Like, they don't even try. Like, I know that yeah. kids might not notice this, but, like, they could have easily made this make sense. So, I, I don't understand. Like, give the parents yeah. a little something if they're watching it with this their is kids. Like, like, damn. Yeah, they don't care about the parents. They <laughs> This is a first draft. This is a first draft. <laughs> um, speaking of parents, what happened to Xenon's parents? Oh, Who I are these pod people? They got um, body snatched. Well, I guess it's not body snatched because these are completely different people. So I I don't know. They they sucked them out Why of the, does the mom space station. Why talk like that? Oh, all breathy? Oh, Xena. Or like I even with like kind of an accent where she's like almost kind of British, but she's not British. Really? Mm. I honestly can't remember. I just remember her screaming when she was trying to fly the spaceship. I can't remember how, what she sounded like when she, like, accent-wise. But she did have, I like, gotta find it. this kind of, like, I don't want to say, like, it's like a meditation voice almost. She's like... Yeah, she did. Xenon, don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. She's like, I used to be... I can't do... <laughs> oh, I need to hear it again to do it, but it's, like, so ridiculous. I need to go back and listen to it. Um... I'll have to just send you a voice memo later of it. Yes, please do. <laughs> Maybe you can insert it in the podcast if you'd like to right here. Oh my god. I could totally do that. I, I can't. I, and it's not a question of not wanting to. It's just, it's simply, it's just, I, I can't. All right. Then don't. But Zay and her aliens. I have to admit, it would be thrilling. Not to mention historical. Why couldn't you be the pilot in the family? I mean, you'd go out there in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Unless I listen back to it and it's just normal. <laughs> and I hallucinate it. We were delirious because this movie <sighs> ran us out of our minds. So, Quite possible, honestly. Yeah. So she's had it. She's like, what more can I take? My very much first world problems are, uh, you know, affecting me. <laughs> Commander Plank then addresses uh, the entire space day and tells them that the U.S. military will be filling the role of WinCom. We know the company that owned the space day in the first movie, owned yeah. by Eagle, evil ass Wyndham. And Lutz. Um, so the U.S. military will be financially backing and be in charge of the space station moving forward. And the citizens of the space day are not pleased. Uh-uh. Um, so the military comes into the station and the commander asked to talk to Z 
And Z's feeling real important. And the reason, though, he requested her specifically is because he wants to put her in charge of making sure that his daughter is comfortable and taken care of. And who's his daughter? Margie. Margie's dumbass. Coming in with the fit, though. Oh, my God. Right. So, so cute. Yeah. So Imagine cute. Imagine having to babysit a girl that's the same age as you. Like that? <laughs> or just, like, be her little <laughs> escort or some me. shit. Like, please yeah absolutely. yeah i would just happily um be taken to uh back to earth <laughs> of putting up with that. Right, like kick me off the space day wherever margie is like i i don't want to be there so just i don't need to be there yeah, yeah. like fuck all of that so margie of course is still like a treacherous ass bitch um like she was in the first movie desperate for attention and yeah, needing so to annoying. lord any power she has over others so, stand her. Margie tells Z, like, you better take care of me or I'm going to get your family kicked off of the space day because that's something that's been ongoing since the military has taken over. Oh, um, but don't take it personally. This is just how I am. <laughs> that's just who she is. Yeah, the that's fuck? just who she is. She's just like a rotten ass bitch. So, <laughs> this includes Z having to cut Margie's food, doing her homework, giving her the last piece of cake, doing her nails, but she does get her back at one point by pinching her nose her nails with um her toenails with super glue. <laughs> That's pretty fun. That was so Xenon has these shifts in the um I'm, I just called it an alien lab. I don't know if there's a proper term for it. That I sounds miss. about right to me. Yeah. Yeah. So she's in the alien lab and <laughs> Xenon uh, hears a zum sound. She tells uh, Orion and Commander Plank, uh, but no one believes her. She tells her parents and everyone's just like you're obviously tripping girl. Like, there's no aliens. There's never been any signs of aliens. Obviously, there's no aliens now. Ridiculous. The one thing I didn't understand is why the hell wasn't this system fucking recording? Like, why doesn't it just record yeah, everything so she can play it back? Because this movie makes no sense, Crystal. That, <sighs> that's actually the reason. Yeah, honestly. I'm, I'm just coming yeah. to terms with it. Yeah. It's hard because <laughs> the first one is so good. And right? this one is such an unmitigated disaster. The first one is like... Aside from Lutz dropping the disc unknowingly <laughs> right in front of his yeah. own face himself, mm -hmm. it is an airtight, solid, romp, hollering ass good time of a Disney Channel original movie. A romp, hollering and ass good time. This is what we get. The, the sequel is this pile of steaming, disgusting donkey doo. Fuck you, doo doo. Yeah, we hate it. Um, but here we are. We're still mm. talking about it. So, <laughs> um, so um, while she's doing this, Margie is hanging out with a bunch of other teen girls when Xenon comes in. Um, and the girls she's hanging out with also include Nebula, who she seems to be winning over with her money and tech, uh, similar to how we know she was back on Earth with Gregory. Yeah. Uh, back in the alien lab, Z hears the zum happen again. And this time uh, they just tell her, like, you know what? You're done here. Like, you're obviously Luku and the Cuckoo. Yeah. So um, she's banned. I... Yes, she's banned. <laughs> I had a note here that Xenon has new parents and they're weird. Um, I found <laughs> them to be odd and off-putting. Yeah. The dad is too pretty for me. Like... I loved the previous dad. He just looked a little bit more. I did too. Rugged or something. He was so animated. Know. He was yeah. so animated. Like I really felt like they had better chemistry too. Like as father and daughter. Yes. Like when she like goes, she tethers out to mm -hmm. look at the um the solar plexus or whatever the hell. Spacewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, she's like, oh, but the view, and he's like, I know the view is so good. And I was like, oh my yeah. god, I like think this is very cute and sweet. But yeah. this dad ain't it. And the mom certainly yeah. not it. Um, also a note, they changed the stress helmet. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I prefer the previous design. It looked more unique. This just looks like a helmet with I lights agree. on it. This it, just like looks, it, yeah, like a bike helmet with like a yeah. little lamp like pull. Literally, yeah. I prefer yeah, the pointy not, top not and then like the little loopy, yeah. the little bulby things going down the sides, you know? Yeah. yeah. thought that was It was way, way more eccentric and odd and mm -hmm. also it the fact that these people all have space madness and just decided to like yeah. start dressing the way they do so. <laughs> space psychosis here we go <laughs> uh but yeah it's uh, almost like the okay. parents this time were just kind of like 
I, they were stiff. I don't know. Like they, they just felt phony. Yeah. They felt phony. They did. Yeah. Ugh, I, yeah, I wasn't. Into it, it literally did feel like her, I know that they don't look alike, but like that her parents were abdu- abducted by pod people and like these right. weird fakers came in. <laughs> That's what I was saying in the beginning, like body snatchers, but it's like, they're not yeah. actual body but snatchers. But they're different bodies. Yeah. But it's just like, Oh, time to pretend to be a dad now. What would a dad say right yes, now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I'm just like, Ooh, that's, yeah. Go and he kind down. of even moved like that. Like, <laughs> like what's going on, dude? Stiff Chill, as hell. Relax. Take an edible, my dude. For real. Oh. Chill out those muscles, babe. Couldn't stand them. So, mm-hmm. um, the military, while this is happening, the military is threatening their home and basically t- dismantling it and taking chunks out, like giant ass chunks out. Yeah. While people are on this space day and they're continuously sending people back to Earth, grounding them as it is. And the grown-ups on board, like Z's parents, Commander Plink, are pretty much ready to give up. They're not really down to fight back, but we know Xenon doesn't take shit lying down. Mm-hmm. Um, we then see Nebula, who is like too, in my opinion, too buddy-buddy with Margie. With Margie, right? Like arms wrapped around each other. And I'm like, Nebula, you are being a bad friend. Truly. Like, girl, Margie's an op. Like, don't don't be all up in okay like it's fine to watch the movie whatever whatever right. in the little common areas right but now y'all you look like y'all best y'all are best friends yeah like yeah. excuse no, me no, no I, I was not down with that I did, I did not like that and i'm like i am a person like you know if i don't like someone and you do that's fine right if they're inherently a bad person which i do think margie is that is different yes that absolutely. is different and also like I would never be besties with someone you actively didn't like because I trust your judgment. <laughs> same, same, same. Like Margie from the depths of her soul just wants to make Xenon's life a living hell. And she's a stupid little bitch. Why yeah. on earth would my best friend, why would I want to be best friends with someone who's getting so close to someone like that? That makes no sense to me. Exactly. So, Even yeah. And additionally, the fact that like, what I would assume and what I think is happening here is that you are trying to befriend me as a way to make my best friend suffer more. Right. And it's just like, so. bruh, why would I want to be a part of that? Make, I simply Neb- don't want to. Nebula's a little bit, uh, I don't know. She's, she's a little too bit bright. grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, I'm just going to say, they did Nebula dirty this entire movie with the outfits and her hair. They did yeah. not know what they were doing with her hair. Truly. She had that like little like, kindergarten double puff bubble look. Yes. And I'm like, yes. Okay. She's supposed to be like a 16, 15 year old girl. Like we need to, we need to get her some braids. We need to get her something else with her natural hair. Like, let, like yes. let's do it. And like, I'm not one to talk about young black women's hair. Like, oh, they should have done it. But I'm like, they should have hired someone to do her hair on the set of this, you know, film. Yes. <laughs> who knew what they were doing and could help her look like make her hair look beautiful. Cause she has beautiful hair. They yeah. just like didn't know what was happening. And it's um, like, they are clearly wanting to highlight her natural hair. Like they, you know, she's got it. Yeah. Out which like, I liked, but they yeah, didn't know how to style it. They just didn't know what to do with it. And I'm like, girl, yeah, these bubbles, this ain't, ain't it. it. This Mm-mm. ain't it. Yeah. And then her outfits bad. Every yeah. single one of them. Mm-hmm. Unflattering. Awful. She had this one like puffy, yes like top and skirt i think combo or something Ugh. it just didn't look it, yeah. she looked like a marshmallow or something like she looks stuck it's and... like which is messed up because i feel like margie and xenon's outfits were like better in this movie yes way better like xenon's outfits were also great mm-hmm. and she looked great in yes. them and then i'm like yes. y'all did nebula super dirty and i'm like what is it what does she have a different stylist like did somebody else come in and design her costumes like what are we doing here and I don't it almost understand feels why there's such a disconnect. Right. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. It feels like intentional. Like they almost wanted Xenon to look better by mm-hmm. making Mar- making um, Nebula look worse. It's almost like they got the two people who are typically on the Disney Channel original movie, um, you know, costume payroll. And then they were like, oh, mm-hmm. hey, intern, you want to style Nebula? You want to you put her costume together? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, do, You want to also you want. maybe do her hair? You can do her right. hair too. Can, yeah. Can you you got that? Okay, cool. Oh yeah, you got that. Yeah. There's there's a comb yeah. over there. Just sure. give that a try. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Anything. Anything will do. That's what it sounds. That's what it looked like. And I'm just like, <sighs> yeah. Our poor girl. Which made me angry. As like the girl. only like semi-prominent black character in this these movies. I'm just like, 
What the fuck? Why? Yeah. The hair and the outfits. My God. Anyway. Oh, but that one dress that Zidon had, this it was all chrome with the pink like shoulder details, like the shoulder. Oh out. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was so cute. I feel like I all her fits wear honestly that in this movie. She also yeah. had those glitter, glitter like chunky heel boots. Yes. <laughs> like, oh. Mm-hmm. I want those mm-hmm. boots. The thigh highs. Yeah. I, yes, I need yeah. those. Her and Margie, every single fit, I'll take it. Mm, loved it. And Margie, yeah. what, what if we just like with, with the fur as usual? Oh, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I love it. What if at thirty five we just both started like dressing like Cena on all? <laughs> I feel like I might, to be honest. I feel like I know. I'm, I'm, like, I was just I'm mom, floating it because wait. it might be my future. <laughs> I, I am literally on that track. I was just telling my mom that I can't wait to be back in Florida to like go thrifting again and like go to TJ Maxx oh, yeah. and just, you know, just do my little Florida girl shopping lifestyle. And I'm dry, I'm getting inspo from this movie. Like I'm going to be looking yeah. for some, some fuzzy, like little, um, I don't know what those little, you know, those tiny little like jackets. Yeah. Like just um, stuff. shrug. Bolero. Shrugs. So, something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shrug. Yeah. So like something like that, but with like a fur collar and then mm, um, I love that. Definitely some chrome, some chrome looking something, maybe yeah. a chrome purse. Like, okay. I, I'm, I'm with it. I'm in my Xenon era yeah. right now. I love it. They do have thrift stores in, um, in the Bay Area you can go to as well. Yeah, but I don't want to like not drive there. So. Oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a car girl. If it's, if it's about me leaving the house, I need to be in the car and yeah. not okay. like, you know, Fending for myself without my own method of transportation. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to let that ride. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Let's see. I mean, I'll Uber uh, and shit places, but I don't know. It's like, then when I come back, I've got to like, you know, bring my belongings with me in this car with a stranger. I just want to have my own little Girl, traveling I said I was ready to let it go. <laughs> you weren't fully <laughs> grasping my my thought. i'm not going to i okay. mean i was even talking about uber and lyft i was talking about public transportation oh <laughs> you girl, know what no. we commoners take because okay. it's good for the environment and very accessible and easy okay yeah that won't ever be me i mean it was one time but not again okay i'm gonna talk about the movie now <laughs> all right <laughs> all right here we go so nebula and z have a falling out like we are having right now over public transit <laughs> um and <laughs> Oh, no, I'm kidding. But Nebula and Xenon are are fighting um, over the whole Margie of it all. Um, oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. then Xenon in her room hears the zums and realizes it actually is zoom, zoom, zoom. Mm-hmm. And it's that song by Microbe. So she tells Orion her theory. Uh, then Xenon goes to Nebula and is like, you know, we fight sometimes, but you're my girl. Like, what's up? And Nebula's being real quiet. And finally she tells Xenon, my family has been tapped. We have to go back to earth. So Damn. Xenon decides that she needs to put a stop to this all. And she's going to go to earth, um, and find what's this, her, what exactly is her plan here? She goes to earth. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, she said okay. she was going to earth to uh put a stop to the space station you know being torn apart but i think she thought protozoa might help her find the alien i like i don't know yes but Uh, why did she connect the aliens to stopping the military i have no clue because it does seem like i do agree that she went to earth to try to use protozoa to get the aliens yes i i don't know but i don't see how that relates to the you got okay, me. You don't have the answers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that when Xenon and Nebula were, like, having their little girl moment in the cargo room, why the fuck was Margie in there? She was just in there before, already spying on them. Like, I don't yeah, understand she was. why. I think she is stalking Xenon. But she was in there before they came in there. She knew they were going to be Oh, oh she was just there? hanging out in there? Yeah. Oh. She did not follow them in or anything. Xenon and Nebula walk in with the big container that, you know, Xenon's going to use for her escape. And then Margie's literally way in the back and she's like, this movie makes no sense. <laughs> That's all I can say to that. Yeah. I, I didn't even notice that. I just let it happen to me and it, it makes no sense. 
I think your brain is trying to protect you from the frustration. And it's just like, yeah. we're just going to let that go. Cool. <laughs> mm. Pretty much. So, of course, Xenon decides to go back to Earth for reasons undecided. And Margie follows her because she wants to have her own Xenon level adventure. Mm -hmm. So they smuggle in boxes. They get there. Xenon realizes Margie's there. So she, you know, takes her along with her. And they go to our favorite aunt's house, Aunt Judy. Yes. So Xenon tells her about the aliens and Judy immediately believes her. Yes. So. Yes. While they that's cool. have a delicious looking breakfast spread. Yeah, they do. That just seemed to be ready so quickly. It looked so good. Yeah, I want, I want IHOP. Good. I, I want to go to IHOP with some pancakes. Oh my god. Ew. Okay. <gasps> so IHOP slander? Yeah, you don't I like IHOP? Gross. No. Where do you go for your pancakes? Okay, first of all, I don't go anywhere for pancakes. Second of all, what? when I want brunch, I go to <laughs> What the hell? I don't go anywhere for pancakes. <laughs> so you never have a craving I don't, for pancakes and you just go somewhere no, to get some pancakes? No. Absolutely never. Not once. We as an adult. I mean, as a kid, yes. Different lives. Oh my yeah. God. I hmm. am a savory with like jam on toast kind of breakfast girly. I don't do pancakes. When you mean savory breakfast, you mean like, like runny eggs or something? They're like, what? What is savory breakfast? I mean, they don't have to be runny, but like eggs oh. and like potato. Um, oh, okay, yeah, sausage. Potato. Mm. Yeah, like I usually do a basic breakfast with toast with jam, so a little bit of sweet there. But hmm. I, I, yeah, I feel like maybe once or twice I've gotten pancakes on a whim, as like a side or like shared them with someone, but I've never just like gone to a place and like ordered pancakes as an adult wow i just i don't want like that's it's too sweet for early an early meal oh i never really have pancakes for bre i'm not going out for breakfast foods i mean as you can imagine i'm going to ihop in the middle of the night because they're 24 hours so that's just i guess that's something me and bradley and franklin would do i, I oh, don't okay. think that's i don't have siblings so we we i didn't do that even so you know people, but you don't I like IHOP. I don't know anyone. So. <laughs> Stop the madness. Who are you I going to this brunch with? Anyone? Who are you getting savory brunch with then? I I don't do that anymore. Oh wow! So your life is just sans breakfast foods. I'm getting brunch Sunday. Oh okay, with your imaginary friend. Yep. Okay. All right. Send me photos of your savory I breakfast. I will. Her name is Crystal, yeah. <laughs> you know what? That is an honor. I'm glad that your imaginary <laughs> friend has a variation of my name. I love uh, that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. But she's very real and she is not you. <laughs> sure thing. I hope you and Crystal yeah, have a blast and we hopefully bottomless do. mimosas. Yeah, we also Ooh. have a podcast called The Decom Bomb. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. Wow. I think I'm losing my mind. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. But any of our listeners who love IHOP as much as I do, please stand up. Please defend me here cuz IHOP hide stand up. <laughs> <laughs> IHOP it might be not the best. But that split decision breakfast is delicious every time. Okay, it'll always hit. And I don't care what the fuck they're doing back there in that kitchen, babe. I'll eat it. It's okay. I do so. care and I will not eat it. Also, I, I don't <laughs> like I don't love chain restaurants, you know? Like give me like a local weird spot. I do understand if you're going in the middle yeah. of the night, it makes sense. I just don't go for meals in the middle of the night, so I, I don't have that. That's true. And I think that is the only chain um that is like a regular for me. My parents love Longhorn, but I'm not a Longhorn girly, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do you okay. feel about Denny's? I've never been to Denny's. Don't go. Yeah, I've never. 
I didn't think you would like Denny's if you don't like IHOP because they're so similar. I don't aren't like they? Denny's now. Oh, no, okay. No. okay. I haven't been to either in at least probably going on twenty years. Wow. So, oh my god. Wow. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I used to go to like equally shitty restaurants in my tw- early 20s like waffle house i was really into waffle house and i lived in atlanta when i was like 22 mm. um but that was probably like the end of my like shitty shitty because then i had like era. real jobs and i could afford like mm. not amazing food but better than waffle house i went I'm to just... waffle house all the time because i was so poor ah uh, okay you just never had a hankering for that waffle house food again like the greasy nice no. you know taste no oh the greasy oh. nice taste yeah. Crystal, what are it's you talking like, about? The you know, greasy, nice taste. It's like almost if you have like a craving for really bad fast food, like Taco Bell. Sometimes I have cravings for Taco Bell. Like Taco Bell is not um, good Mexican food. No. You, you've never had Taco Bell? What? I've never had a craving for Taco Bell. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've had Taco Bell. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I was um, going to say, I feel like you, we might have had Taco Bell together at some point. You must have. We absolutely not, have not. I have not had Taco Bell in several years. Well, yeah, but I mean in our youth. Oh, like in college. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, sure. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, it's possible, it's possible. I did eat it in college for sure. But like, yes, okay, so my place now mm. that I go to when I want shitty food, um, what's it called? Shake Shack. Like, I love Shake Shack. That's your defi- <laughs> That's your version of shitty food? Yeah. Shake Shack is like, it, those burgers are good. And their chicken is I know. good, too. Yeah, okay. I well, like that's, it. That's not shitty food. That's as shitty as I go with my food. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. My yeah, very bougie, sensitive y'all. tummy. She's bougie as hell. Says that's the true. girl who won't take public transit. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I will still go eat McDonald's and Taco Bell without a problem. Okay. No, 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 no. It's all about balance, baby. Yeah. I don't think I need to balance my diet with uh, fat food. I don't think I need to do that. I only do it because I literally crave it sometimes. I don't, I don't know why. I hear I that. that says about yeah, me. I mean, eat what brings you joy. I have no problem with it. I just personally don't want it. I don't like it. It's yeah. not for me. Okay. You eat your uh, $600 um. breakfast. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> your face. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love brunch. It's the best meal of the day. I actually am very excited to go to brunch this weekend. Oh, nice. We should go yeah. to brunch soon. Oh, we, we should. will. Yeah. Bachelorette party is coming up. We'll absolutely do that. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, oh, I, can't, I shouldn't say this on the podcast. Never mind. I'll, I'll just oh. tell it to you in private. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Good okay. times ahead. All right, let's get through this movie. Let's do it. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> this episode so, is so off the fucking rails, bro. Oh this God. is what happens during the movies that we can't stand. We just get, Le- like, we lo- we get loopy. <laughs> well, like, let's talk about anything else. <laughs> anything. Let's talk about IHOP Let me say, okay, <laughs> ten <Seven> times. times. <laughs> Oh my god okay i tell you this movie makes no sense y'all we're gonna get to the end and you're gonna be like what the fuck was that so yeah unless you've already watched it and you already know but we saved you you don't don't need to watch yeah, it don't watch this right if now. you haven't don't you don't, do don't it. need to watch it and we'll let okay. you know soon if you should watch z3 either so yeah i'm scared now i'm nervous That's, same i'm nervous like, i'm glad that you this? have to recap that one i'm relieved <sighs> God. What's after the Xenons? What What's after the Xenons? I have no clue. Up, Up, and okay, Away? I have to find out. It's the poster that I'm seeing out. right now. I wish it was Up, Up, and Away. I love that movie. The up, Bomb. Up, I, oh, yeah. That's a great decom. one. Come. Let's go to full watch list. So it's Can of Worms, which I don't even uh, recognize. I don't even know what that is. What the fuck is that? I remember that one. Oh, but after that I is the 13th year, which I love. Oh, oh my God. hell yeah. Yeah, I love the 13th year. I'm excited for that one. Oh, we're getting into some great shit after Can of... I mean, I don't know anything about Can of Worms, but... Wait! Was Can of Worms the one with the aliens? Like the puppet alien looking things? Yeah, I think oh, so. And I remember God. hating it as a kid. Yeah, yeah, same. But after that is the 13th year, Smart House, Johnny okay. Tsunami, Johnny <gasps> Capahala, back <gasps> on board. Genius. <gasps> 
I feel I like that's with one of the Lawrence that brothers. The tiny Lawrence brother? Is that him? No, it's with this other guy. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Don't look under the bed. Horse sense. <gasps> Lawrence Brothers Central, baby. Ooh, oh my god. Yes. Um wait till jumping ship, the sequel where we got Jump all the Lawrence Brothers, baby. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and then up, up and away. And then the color. Oh, oh yeah, okay. So we have a lot of Ooh. shit back to back that's like looking hella good. Oh, so we just gotta make it through the dark times. Okay. That's yeah, good. these are the dark we we're almost out. The dark days. But the Halloween towns next to the Xenons, <laughs> like what 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 were we thinking? And then the under wraps twenty twenty one and under wraps too. <laughs> oh yeah well that's good we got some stinkers out of the way i'm relieved um all right well you're doing but, so that's great great for me well, you're doing z3 and i don't have high hopes <laughs> facts god <laughs> damn are we ever gonna get through we're not gonna we're just we're done we're done we're not gonna and talk about th- thank you for listening <laughs> goodbye no, <I'm> <laughs> okay let me get I'm, I'm gonna do it okay let's do it so xenon oh. says that they should study oh this part's so stupid oh <laughs> they right study protozoa's lyrics to try to find where he is like which i'm like this is some taylor swift shit or like britney spears you're like okay she had this one lyric in this one song or like she posted on instagram and she mm-hmm. used this word and she used it in her 1990 song about depression so i think yep. she's depressed it's like what are we doing what are you talking yeah what <laughs> are you talking about you're grasping at yeah. anything babe like at anything but this one is much simpler it- and they're correct so yeah. um the thing they I think about his though- lyrics yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, no. Continue. Continue. I think about his <laughs> lyrics and Margie says one helpful thing in her life where she's like, oh, he sings about a lot about someone named Linda. And she's mm-hmm. like, oh, my God. So they Google um, after they try to find a woman named Linda, they Google homes with the name Linda in it. You yeah. know, his home registered on the Internet with his name. Satellite you know, images. To mm-hmm. As yeah. it is for celebrities who want to live <laughs> safe, private lives. Um, and they're like, oh, my God, this is his house. So. They drive to a mountain, girl, and then Xenon and Margie proceed to spend the next several hours minimally, maybe yeah. days, I don't know, Not hiking sure. up said mountain to get to his house. Crazy, right? Oh, I was going to talk about the uh, just the quickness with which they found this man who's supposedly been missing from the entire world for two years. Yeah. I don't know. It just Instantly. Seems- yeah Mm -hmm. just they found his house in under five minutes of effort yeah like Like, from let's look at his lyrics to finding Mm -hmm. his home address less than five minutes yeah honestly and i it's like okay we found his house it's at the top of this mountain right right and with all this technology we've come so far but we can't find a way to just find a way to drop us right there at the top because he we gotta gotta hike it did not hike this mountain. He didn't do that. No. Protozoa he, did no, not. No, he's very lazy. He has the girls later carrying his luggage. Like, he's not hiking it's that mountain. Young teenage girls. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Um, this this is also another thing that I think they could have made more sense, where I understand they couldn't waste a lot of movie time with us watching them figure it out, but I feel like yeah. they could have, like, shown the passage of time of right. them, like, like Give quick a cuts. montage, baby. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, exactly. Like montage, like of them having figured this out, but like instantly figuring it out makes no sense. In half a conversation, just a few sentences, and, and we got the we got the coordinates, babe. We're on our way. Like what? And I think they just like keep trying to make it make sense by saying, "Well, Z just has a knack for being right about these things. We know Xenon just like you know seems to be able to figure these types of things out. You know, mm-hmm. she just often is right. And it's like no one is this. No. No one is this. No. And that's kind of weird because just five seconds ago, y'all were making fun of her for the whole alien theory. So what is And now y'all believe it. <laughs> Apparently she is just that bitch. She is that bitch. Yeah, I guess so. So again, he must live close because they drive right up to that mountain. Yeah. Um, Aunt Judy Lucky, just, convenient. She just drops him off and wishes him good luck. Good luck hiving convenient. up this treacherous <laughs> mountain for what looks like it could be days, girls. Hope you survive. Bye. Yeah, and they are not dressed for um, a oh. hike major, which is what no. it is. But they <laughs> do it. Margie uh, does fall in mud mm-hmm. on her face, which was cathartic to yeah. witness. Satisfying, for sure. Back on the space day, we see that Margie has left her dad a video message. Oh, this bitch. Yeah. Telling him that Xenon has forced her to come to Earth with her, like basically took her hostage as Xenon goes about her plans. 
Um, so treacherous. Bitch move. Bitch, bitch move. Yeah, so they're going up this mountain. They get to this, like, get to the house. And as they approach it, there's this, like, tickling force field type thing where it basically holds you in place and makes makes you laugh uncontrollably, which is kind of cute. Yeah. So Protozoa, who is now a recluse, still has his hair platinum blonde and spiked Mm -hmm. to high heaven. And he's wearing his own merch when he uh, greets the girls. He recognizes (laughs) Xenon from the first movie, obviously. Once inside, Xenon plays... Yeah, it's just, like, done. Like, I'm sorry. If you show up to my house after two years of apparently me not having left it, I'm not well. I won't be looking like... I'm not looking well. (laughs) No. 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 But he looks like he has a glam team there, and it's just him. So I'm like, he's he's got skills. It's just him. Yeah. He does, indeed. He kept that hair colored nicely. Mm -hmm. So Xenon plays the alien zooms for him, and he is quickly on board with the idea of being the first rock star uh, to play for aliens. So he he wants that notoriety. Yeah, he was having Uh, kind of a crisis. Like, when we first see him, mm -hmm. he's, like, leaving a video message to someone, actually. I don't even know His manager. Oh, his manager. Okay. And he's Mm -hmm. all like, I'm the first rock star in space, baby. What am I going to do now? What new yeah. heights can I climb if I've already done all there is to do? And so he's like, yeah, this, that was like, really good protozoa. You think so? I tried my best. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, you killed it. Thank you. But yeah, he just he wants yeah. to do something otherworldly yet again. And he's feeling. Yeah, he's in a funk, creative funk. He's like peaked with playing in space and right. so he's like where do i go from here there's nothing mm-hmm. else to conquer you know yeah um so until the aliens... aliens entered yep here we go <laughs> uh so xenon is trying to figure out how to get them all connected the aliens her uh aunt judy all the people all the players blah 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 Still so the why. aliens does yeah. she just have a gut the feeling a- that the aliens will help them i guess i guess because ultimately what she does is she has her mom take a shuttle mm-hmm. to meet them, to take them to the aliens. Yeah, I don't understand. I'm confused. <laughs> I really like talking through that so slowly, thinking like, I'll it was gonna figure come it to out yeah. by the end of this sentence if I talk <laughs> like this. <laughs> you were so but head empty. Dots would connect. <laughs> Babe, there's no dots. There's nothing to connect. There are no dots. Oh, Oh my God. (laughs) Jesus. This movie's so cuckoo. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. This movie threw me for an absolute loop. Like, I don't... I could not tell you what Xenon was thinking. I don't know. (laughs) It's not a clue. So, Xenon gets the location from the aliens on her zap pad and she oh, sends yeah. it to Ryan to kind of be able to decipher and see exactly what the coordinates are. Margie, uh, she decides to, Oh no, she didn't decide. She is talked into, uh, calling her dad, but she sucks at technolo- technology. So instead of like calling her dad, she actually just gets to like tap into a meeting and witness him. Mm. Um, and he's basically holding a meeting where they're planning on replacing, uh, I'm sorry, not replacing. They're planning to send all the space day people to Earth ASAP. Yeah, the whole thing Which is going. the opposite. And the whole thing's going. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, we see Judy, who is still dating Commander Plank, and she convinces him to meet them at the alien location. Yes. I love that blue sweater she was wearing, that thick navy blue, like... Oh, yeah. It was like a mock neck kind of sweater. I liked her look. And so she had cute. like pants that were kind of like 70s yeah. like pattern. It was very mm-hmm. cute. And then like the little um, vest that also had like the 70s like fringe, like super long fringe when yeah. she was climbing over the fence. Yeah. Love that. I love Aunt Judy. She was my favorite character. She's a queen. Yeah, she is. So Margie then asks Xenon, we get the famous scene, like, why do you hate me? And Xenon's like, uh, <laughs> bitch, you hate me. And then Margie's like, you shouldn't take it personally, even though it's very personal. And right. Xenon, she basically Margie tells Xenon she's jealous of like Xenon's just like natural likability. Like everyone goes along with you and like you just light up a room. And uh, Xenon's like, everyone has issues, including me, Margie. It's not an excuse for you to be a total bitch. Facts. <clears throat> and uh, that's a radical concept to Margie. She never considered that. <laughs> she thinks because she moved around a lot because her dad's in the military, she can just yeah. be a bitch. 
girl. Ain't nobody care about your stupid little first world sob story. Shut the fuck up. I know, you rich white bitch. Anyway, Mm -hmm. we see Nebula and her mom, and Nebula is completely hating Earth. She hates the apartment, and the military stops by to see if she knows where Xenon is. Yeah. We didn't see uh, Margie's dad, who's... Uh, name his last name is Hammond, so I'm just gonna call him that. Oh yeah, Hammond, and then uh, he realizes he allowed Plank to basically make the plans to meet the aliens mm-hmm. without knowing that's why. He finds out that is why, so he puts Plank under military arrest. Mm-hmm. So they go to their backup plan for a pilot, and who is that? Uh, uh, naturally, the the character who canonically hates flying, um, but is also a pilot. Yep. Xenon's mom. Hmm. She's immediately in that so, stress helmet, babe. She's like, I, yeah, she I is can't do this. To the max. But mm-hmm. she talks about how she used to be adventurous and lo- love flying. But uh, the dad's like, well, we had a kid that changed the stakes. And so now she is, um, what's the term I'm looking for? Someone who's afraid to leave their house. Agor- She's an agoraphobic. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, Z's mom, my voice is cracking. Sorry, I still have like, oh. some illness. I had COVID recently, y'all. <clears throat> Poor okay. baby. So Z- I'm doing okay. I just get like a little tickle. Mm. So Xenon's mom and Orion take the take the shuttle and they go to the beach to pick up Protozoa, Aunt Judy, Margie, Xenon, and Nebula just as the G-men uh, approach them to stop stop things. What is so that? Xenon's mom, I don't... Is that yeah. The... Oh, okay. That's what it sounds Okay. I don't know what Xenon's mom's name is, so I'm just going to keep calling her Xenon's mom. Oh, um, same. Yeah. Xenon's mom <laughs> thanks Xenon. They have a really cute moment on board where she's like, thank you for like helping me find my bravery again and shaking me out of my little safety cocoon. And I really thought that was yeah. cute. And she says, you know, I thought about all the things I would teach my kid when I was having you, and I'm just amazed by all that you teach me. So very sweet, very cute. That was sweet. Best part of the movie. Yeah, yeah. nice little moment. Yes. Yeah, so while they're on their way to the alien meeting point, they realize that Orion did not refill the auxiliary tanks, which are basically like the gas tanks, so they have no fuel. So they're essentially lost in space. Mm-hmm. Uh, just as all hope is lost, the aliens show up and they decide to help our heroes. They say that uh, they so they they're basically like light beings. So they yeah. as light materialize onto their shuttle and they communicate telepathically through Xenon. Uh, we find out that their technology has been broken for three years and they've been lost in space. So in exchange for navigational support that they can provide or the, the crew can provide, they can help the uh, our main characters get home to the space day. No mention of saving the space station, even though... No, because that has nothing uh, like, to do with anything. The, yeah, like still not sure what Xenon's plan was. She didn't even ask about it. Is like, is so. it... Okay, is it this? Is it that... Xenon believes that the reason the military wants to basically dismantle things is because they think they're all a bunch of loonies who believe in aliens. So if she can prove that the aliens are real, the military will chill. I don't know. She, I don't, I don't think so. Cause the alien thing is very new. The alien thing popped up while the, um, the military commander dude was there yeah i know but i'm saying like is that which i'm not saying it makes sense but is that what she's operating under because think about it in the end when they do prove the aliens are real they stop <laughs> like that's what does stop the dismantling of the space day well the aliens move the space station back into orbit because the right. military was like the space station has moved out of orbit and it's deteriorating at a rapid rate. So I like, I don't want to oh. be taking it apart, but we have to, because you're all going to fucking die on it anyway, regardless. Oh, I so missed then, that. Okay. Yeah. The aliens move it back to orbit. Okay. And you know, they ultimately save them, but it's like, they didn't have to do that. They were just lost and needed some fucking directions, and they got right. it. Right, and she didn't know. She didn't know the aliens were gonna do anything. Exactly. So, <laughs> I think I, she was operating under that though. Like, I think she really thought, she, like, if I can prove the aliens are real, then Hammond won't think that we're all a bunch of alien loving loonies, and he'll mm-hmm. let us be. Like, I think I mean, that's that, her line of thinking. Yeah, I could see her. It has that. to be. Yeah, I can't think of any other connection to the aliens 
that she would think would save the space station. So I, I that's got to be it. That's got to be it. I just feel like I'm missing something, right? Like, what am I missing here? Yeah, like, is there a detail that we missed? We both watched if the movie. If there is, please. <laughs> yes, we did, but it did put my ass asleep. Okay, so. <sighs> I don't know. Like, I don't know. We must have missed something. Yeah. Like, it can't make this. There can't be that big of a hole. Someone right? please tell us if we miss something. Please write us. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Because I'm not um, watching this again, ever again. So No, I simply can't do that. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an option. So, uh, Orion asked them, if you're such, like, high-tech alien beings, why don't you just take the navigational data? And they say taking without asking is not polite, which they're correct. Oh. Um, they're polite and aliens. They get the data they need, and they head out. We then see Hammond, Xenon's dad, and Commander Plank, and they see the aliens dropping off our heroes at back of the space day. After all this, um, Hammond is still pretty mad, and he's <laughs> going off. Margie finally steps in and stands up to her dad and dev- defends Xenon's actions. He's like, there's still no proof that these were even aliens, but the aliens come back, and uh, I guess that's when they put the space day back in orbit yeah. and prove that they are indeed aliens. I guess. Um, that's kind of like the end of the main plot. We then cut to, uh, yeah. because Protozoa is here, uh, we have Micro perform. And where is he performing? Oh, my God, at Plank and Judy's wedding. And right? his hair is not spiked which I think represents that he is in the next phase of his being. Oh, he's evolved from the previous Protozoa yeah. era. Okay. Exactly. He's mm-hmm. in his next era. Yeah. He looks good. It looks good, not spiked. Yeah, he um, looks good. Yeah. Yeah. He's hot. I think he's hot. But Plank so and Judy are getting married, which... I, I missed the engagement. I missed everything in between, so... I missed the part where they lived on the same planet. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> like, how has this relationship developed? It's been a year. It's one year later, right? That's what they said in the I beginning. Thought it was two of years later. Rolling. Oh, two years later? Oh, it's one year later? I thought it was I... two years because I thought, like, Xena oh. was 13 in the first one. And now she's 15. But I could be wrong. Also, no, the movies I, are two years apart. I wrote it. It's a year later. That's what. That's the, the oh. booming voice in the beginning. So one year of their long oh. distance relationship, um, and they're married. And I, they live on different. They don't live on the same planet. Right. The longest distance and of long distance relationships. She's afraid of like living in space. Mm-hmm. Her motto is Terra Firma, and he's the commander of a space station. So. Um, yeah, cool. A match made in heaven. So, Love it. we end with The Galaxy is Ours. As we said, it's a yeah. bop. The galaxy is ours, my girl. The galaxy is ours. The galaxy is ours. Yeah, beautiful. That's <laughs> good. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, um, I, I was kind of like, this movie, as bad as it is, kind of cool. There's no, like, romance focus. But in the final moments, mm-hmm. Xenon turns around. He ga- She gazes upon the face of the nerd that's been there all along. And he mm-hmm. sees her as if for the first time. And we know they're going to mm-hmm. have sex. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. That was inappropriate. Even though I will say that the actors were all over 18 when this movie was made. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't um, know about Xenon. She was like in her, she was in her early 20s. She was like 23 or something. No, I think she was like 18. No, she's 39 now. So yeah. in, tw- in 2001, she was 23. Yeah. Right? Well, she's be five years older than we are. In two- Is she? Wait, no. Oh, yeah, well, she's 39. Well, we're 34 and she's 39. Yeah, so yeah, she that's five even. years. So oh, 2001, so she, she would have been 16. So she was not over 18. My mistake. She wasn't over 18. No. Wait. I apologize wait. for my sex joke. Even though teens do have sex. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally fine. Okay. 1999. I was 10 years old. 2000. 2001. We were 11. I was 11 most of the year. You were 11 in December yeah. of 2001. Okay. She. I was 11 all the year. Of 2001? 
Yes. Uh, okay. My okay. age always matches the end of the year. Just like it's 24, I'm going to be 34 until December. Oh, yeah. You just turned 34. Oh, my God. Yeah, so 2001, I was 11 until December. Got you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Why did I think she was in her 20s? What math did I do? I, 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 I don't I can't. Know. Yeah, I can't get into it. <laughs> I don't. You're doing some Halloween town math over there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shit don't make no sense. I'm over here thinking, I'm like, she's in her early 20s. What do you mean? Of course. <laughs> Oh my god. And I was she like, I think she was 18. No, she was like 23. <laughs> <laughs> she was literally a young teenager. Oh my god. Yeah. I think it's the haircut that makes her look like more of a grown up she than she looks actually mature. is. mature, yeah. And that's what made me look up her yeah. age in the first place. But I don't know how I landed on uh she was 23 when this was filmed. <laughs> Girly, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue, yeah. Don't, don't um, that math, as they say, is not math. <laughs> it ain't math. Um, <laughs> oh, God damn. Um, and then we see Xenon and her two friends, Nebula and Margie, dancing it out. And that's the end of this film. Mercifully, the end. <laughs> uh, was it merciful? I don't know. It's merciful that it is now over. It was not uh, merciful. Um, that it existed? It. Yeah. Yeah. True. Oh my Girl. God! This movie was filmed twenty three years ago. There we go. Yeah. Oh, so you that, thought she was twenty three because boom. it was filmed twenty three years ago. I yep. I just mixed up the wrong numbers of what was going <laughs> oh, on. Mm-hmm. You're, so, you're so funny. Don't mind me, just losing my mind over here. <laughs> well, at least I, I just like, buy this book. I just picture oh. you doing the math for everyone's age using that logic, and you're like, it's so weird that everyone was twenty three <laughs> when they were in this movie. When this movie the was parents filmed too. <laughs> so crazy every cast member was 23 committed plank 23 he looks kind of old for 23 though but he was you heard it here oh my god decom news funny. <laughs> decom news <laughs> <laughs> okay ay, ay, so ay. oh we gotta rate this we gotta rank this oh no whoa whoa <laughs> Okay, I have a thought about where I wanted to go. Please lay it on me. I would say number 10. I... You think lower? Number 11? I do. I think it's 11. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 11. I can agree with that. I can yeah. agree with that. Okay. Um. So 11 puts it right below Halloween Town High and above Suzy Q. Mm-hmm. That's, wow, what a fall from grace. Like, the first scene on is number three. The right. sequel is number 11. 11. It's yeah. all riding on Z3 to really round out the trilogy. It's going to be bad. I'm scared. Yeah. yeah, I'm scared. But as you said, after that, better things after Can of Worms, at least. But Can of Worms could be, like, amazing secretly. We don't remember it at all, so maybe it's great. Yeah. I'm remembering just, like, a treehouse and then the aliens with the, like, the puppet aliens. I don't know. I have no idea what it's yeah. about. Yeah. That's all I remember as well. And I remember mm. kind of like seeing that as a kid and being like, I don't want to want to watch that. But like mm. being really excited by the concept of decoms, but not into that one specifically. Mm. Um, so yeah. Maybe it'll come uh, back to us in our adulthood and we'll love it. Who knows? Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, wonderful. So next week we'll be talking about Z3. And yes. I believe that one was filmed in New Zealand. Godspeed. Oh, is that the island that they're on? Like the island scenes? Maybe. They're on a beach somewhere in New Zealand? Yeah. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, but uh, I'm excited for you to recap that one. Oh, God. What a horrible thing to yeah. say. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, like, final mm. thoughts? or comments before we wrap this one up baby Mm, i'm excited to get my book that's it because it looks really cute as well yeah the cover y'all of xenon girl of the 21st century it's adorable so look it up get you a little cute book to commemorate this just the first movie we're not commemorating the sequel um the whole trilogy yeah um we can post a photo of it I will. Oh my God. When it arrives. Yes, absolutely. 
But aside Perfect. from that, I just, um, yeah, somebody tell us the piece that we're missing because the movie still doesn't make any yeah. sense. But The Missing Link. The Missing Link. Did you watch that movie? That Clay Nation movie? Uh, with Hugh Jackman? No. And um, no, Zach Galifianakis. Oh, yeah. It's about uh, Sasquatch. The Missing Link. Oh, no, no quote, I unquote, missed missing that. Link. That was a good one. It was funny. Oh, oh okay. I'll Do check you it out. have any final thoughts? Yeah, you should. It's probably streaming I somewhere. Any final thoughts? I never want to talk about this movie ever again. <laughs> I mean, we barely talked about it in the episode about the movie, so that definitely. We got through that whole synopsis. We did by the skin of our teeth. Yeah. So, we talked about um, a whole lot. I guess with that, yes, we did. Um, <laughs> with that, Thank you for listening. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this episode, even though we know this movie itself was impossible to have enjoyed. Disgusting. Um, And we love you. We love you. We'll see you next time, babies. Next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to The Bomb Decom. You can follow us all over the internet on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all at The Bomb Decom. And at our website at thebombdecom.com. You can also email us at thebombdecom at gmail.com. We release new episodes every Wednesday, so you better find your ass back here next week. This show was created, produced, and hosted by us, Bethany Birdhill and Crystal Innes, and edited by me, Crystal. Our theme music credit also goes to DJ Quads. Thank you, DJ Quads, for the excellent music. You can find them on YouTube. And we will see you next time, babies. Bye.